Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we will be taking a look at these shape sequencers inside of Hive 2. Now, these shape sequencers, there's four of them, A, B, C, D, and they allow us to do some pretty cool things because they allow us to take these really cool outputs and control things. So, for example, we could take shape A and link it to the cutoff and just give it some action there. And if we play it now, we see the filter move according to the whims of shape A. We can control how fast this happens by changing the time base. So we could go like 1 over 32, 1 32nd. This is really fast. Or we could go slower. Or we could go quarter notes, eighth notes. So pretty handy tool right here. Now, if we want to change the shape of whatever shape A is doing and we click, I can actually drag. And so right now, shape A we see is active. These, these blue boxes mean that these are the ones that shape A is going to use. So... It goes through these like so. One, two, one, two, one, two. Maybe we'll go the other way. And you can just click and drag to change the shape up here. Now, if we want to be a little more interesting, what we can do is I'm going to invert this because I think it'll sound cooler inverted. And what I can do is while I'm over this grid and you get to this grid by simply clicking on the, the, the step you're on, if you scroll your mouse wheel while over it, it will actually be give you the ability to bring up more. That way you can get faster rhythms. If you hold shift while doing this, it makes it a little more fine so you can get like exactly what you want. But we can get like triplets and whatnot. And then four is the most you can have. So let's go ahead, let's leave it with just the two. I like that. Now, uh, I wanted to show you sort of how this thing works down here. So. This is where we sort of say which shape sequencer gets which steps. So right now, A is playing through steps one and two and just looping through continuously. If I put a, a brick here, then the question happens, does nothing happen during step three? The answer is to shape A, step three just doesn't exist. If I play it. So it does not care about step three. Like we could make step three something different so you know that it's being skipped. And that's, this is actually really cool because what I like to do a lot of the times with this is I can have shape A play these four steps as a sequencer, and then I can have shape B do something different. I could have it, I don't know, maybe we do something like this. And we can change our shape here by clicking on these segment types. So I'll make that one, I'll make these last two triangle waves. And I'm going to hook shape sequencer B up to the D tune because that's like my favorite thing to hook it up to. And let's go to four, so it has some voices to detune. So this is turning on and off. Now, the filter is so sharp, the detune is not getting a lot of action here. So I may want to adjust this so that it takes longer for the filter to do its thing. Uh, one way of doing that is just to set an offset so that it doesn't go all the way down. So I can actually bring these up and create a zero offset. That way it doesn't go all the way down and I'm able to do what I want to do. So we're just going to come through here. So now we can hear the triangle wave affecting the low pass at the end there. And so that's pretty nice. Now, if we go ahead and reset this, let's look at this shape sequencer area, the step editor. I mean, that's what I'm going to call it, the step editor, a little bit more closely. So this is the left. This has a special name in the shape sequencer. It's called the, uh, what is this? This is the right the right value, and this is the left value. This controls just the max it can be at. And this is going to become important later because we're going to see some cool things that can be done by actually using a shape sequencer to dynamically change these. Uh, we've already looked at the scrolling, and now let's just look at the curving. So we can curve down, we can curve up, and if you double click on it, it'll actually reset it. Right clicking gives you a quick option to the segment types. And if you come down to the step editor and double click, it'll actually flip it for you. Which can be a pretty handy tool to have at hand. And so, okay, uh, that's how that works there. Now, let's say, let's bring shape sequencer C into the picture just to show you another neat way of doing this. So let's say I want shape sequencer C to have four unique shapes because I'm going to use it to sort of just control something a little randomly. Well, I can do that. I could say, hey, shape sequencer C, you go here, you go here, you go here, and you go here. So shape sequencer C is going to loop through these four, 
A is going to loop through these and B is going to loop through these. So there's not really a, a silence in this. And now I can tape shape state. Yeah. Now I can tape shake shape sequencer C. Holy cow, man. And let's go ahead and hook that up to something. Let's, let's uh, give it the resonance and we'll just bring the resonance up here. And we see there's these different modes down here. We have loop that just goes through one, two, three, four. We have pool or loop backwards. And that just starts at the last one and goes forward. We have random. That's the one we're going to use. It's going to randomly select these shapes. So we'll get these random resonances and you'll see the red light up just sort of randomly. Let's play that. You see it's just going all over the map here. So that is pretty cool. Let's play some lower notes. Now, this is, brings up a good point. So I just played a chord, and when I played that chord, notes were all over the map. Like if I were to go one, two, three, four, and hit them like slightly out, off time from each other. So that isn't going to work, right? It's just a mess. So what we need is we need all of them to share a single envelope. And that's actually what this trigger option does here. So we have poly and we have single. So poly just means that every note will get its own envelope, which can be cool sometimes, but here obviously it is not working out. So we're gonna go to single and now they'll all share the same envelope. Very nice, very nice. Uh, this is a, this is pretty cool. We're coming along here. I'm tempted to add effects and start doing additional things, but we're looking at the shape sequencer. So a lot can be done with this shape sequencer here. So that's poly and single. That's the time base. Uh, we've covered this. So let's go ahead and dive into the order here. So we've already looked at loop. Let's go ahead and deactivate these just so that we have a clear view of what's sort of happening here. All right, so loop is gonna go forward. So we're starting at one end and just going through one, two, three, four. If we go pool, that's backwards. You've already seen random. It's just, it's just going all over the place. We have one shot, so this is just gonna play through and then be done. It, it's just gonna play through it once. You see, I'm holding down the notes, but nothing's going on because at zero, our cutoff is all the way down. So that's one shot. We have one by one, and th the one by one is affected by your trigger. Uh, it's kind of interesting. So it'll advance through your sequence one at a time as you hit notes. However, in single, when I hit a new note, it just plays the first one over and over and over. If you hold down that note and push a second note, it'll advance through it. And so that's something to be aware of with single. If I use poly and then just hit one note repeatedly, it'll step through as fast as I could push that. So this could be really cool if you want things to play differently when notes are sustained versus individual notes as far as stepping through the step sequencer, the shape sequencer. Very nice, very nice. And finally, we have one random. It's going to pick one randomly, but then it's just gonna stop. So before, it continually picked random values. Here, it just picks one, at random, and then it just plays that one, and that's it. So you see, the others are still going. See how these are still going, but shape sequencer A has, has quit, giving up the ghost on us. Very nice, very cool. So let's go ahead, let's go to loop. That's probably the most common one you're gonna be in. And all right, now there's a couple secret menus in here that you may not have been aware of. So we've been connecting these, and that's, that's the basis of the shape sequencer. But if we come in and let's look at this. So shape sequencer A, there is, if we right click and go to the shape sequencer, we can view additional targets that are not necessarily available here. And so we have rate A, B, C, D. Oh yeah, this is an interesting point. Let's go ahead, let's look at that. Um, so shape sequencer A, let's say that we want it to change its time base as we play here. So I'm playing notes and I want to change the time base. Well, I can use another shape sequencer. Uh, let's use B and let's give it a special setup to make this clear. I'm going to use B and on B, I'm going to change it to a pulse wave and I'm going to make it just a flat line. 
All right, so B is a flat line, and it's just gonna loop through this one thing. And we want it to control the speed of shape A, so we're just gonna click and drag and set it to control the time base. And we see it's been set up down here. However, this setup doesn't move the knob for us. So if we do this, nothing's gonna happen. And what this knob has become is a sort of speed control that you can use because at zero, it doesn't affect it at all. And then as we bring it up, the modulation is allowed to occur. It's allowed to go higher. And you can actually see the value up here when I adjust it. And so when it's at maximum, rate A will be as fast as it can go. And that is pretty cool. So let's go ahead, let's bring these down because what this is not a very usable speed unless you want to do some crazy modulation. We'll bring it down here and this can act as a sort of nifty way to get a grip on these shapes. Let's change this to single because I want to play some chords. Play a bit higher. So you get the idea, we're able to move through here. Let's bring this a little lower, maybe just get it to toggle through some speeds. Oh, and you know what? This too makes a little less sense. These should be just direct lines. Let's just make these all close to straight. Not perfectly straight, it's kind of cool to have the variation. Now we can bring our shape sequencer B up a touch and give it a higher ability here. So that could be pretty fun to mess with. You can also modulate this, like we could use an LFO to move this and create this constant sort of jittery pattern. Uh, let's go ahead, let's do that. We'll, we'll go ahead, we'll grab the LFO, we'll modulate this, we'll give it some room. So pretty cool. That's just something nifty. You can do this with all of them. Let's remove that. All right, so now that we understand this, let's uh, reset all of this. And you have your modulation targets in here. We talked about this in the function generator video, so I'm not gonna cover these things, but uh, you can check them out if you want. Uh, so, all right, let's go ahead. Let's look at shape sequencer A. And now there are some special options here that each of the shape sequencers offer you. So up until now, they've all, they've all kind of done the same job and you've just had four of them. And now we get to somewhere, something where it's a bit different. So we notice in here on these shapes, there are four things we can change. We can change, well not four, there are three things and then there's a bonus thing that D can do. So right now the shape can be adjusted on the left side, the right side, and we can also change the curviness of this shape by clicking and dragging. And the shape sequencers actually do this for us. So if you click in here and go to shape sequencer, we see that there's left value and only A has been endowed with the power to be able to do this. We have the right value and only B can do this. So if you wanna change the left value, you can do that, but you have to use A. Same, C can adjust the curviness and D is something called ratchet. I, I don't know the source of this term, but it's basically a multiplier. So it allows us to multiply things. So let's go ahead, let's look at these things in action. So our source, let's pick uh, shape sequencer B again. So we're just gonna, this is a faster way than going through the menu. And so B has been set up to be this, this straight line. So this is really nice and easy to see. And we're going to use it to change shape sequencer A. We're going to change the left value. So keep in mind our left value is these right here. So as we drag this up and down, since shape sequencer B is just looping through this line, we're gonna see the left value start to change. So it'll act as a kind of amplitude gate. So if I play this, we see that I'm able to control the amplitude. Now we could set up something pretty cool here. Like for example, we could take the mod envelope out here and we could create a sort of modulation envelope, an amplitude envelope, but this time it would be to control the shape sequencer, and we would have to use A to achieve a setup like this. 
Will we click this and drag it up? So that's an alternative way of doing things. Now, okay, that's the shape sequence. That's the value here. Uh, there's one nuance I did not touch on that I probably should touch on. And that is what happens if we have things that are like straight lines or bend somewhere. In the pulse width, if you drag, click and drag up and down, you're able to adjust where this pulse happens. So what if I have something like this? Will it play one rate or will it play two rates? Well, it's actually, it's going to, let's just uh, hear it go. Let's set this up to be 100%. And let's set this up to control the time base because that'll be more clear. So I'm going to go to rate A. And so now it's going to modulate the time rate, the time, the time base, and it's going to play through. And the question is one rate or two rate. So let's listen. So we see we're getting two rates for sure. There's one that's easy to hear and the other one's so fast. It's creating this crazy modulation. Let's bring this down. So, okay, we see there's two rates here. So when we play through, it actually sequences and takes the value at that current point of the modulation. So let's go ahead, let's add another by hold, by not holding, by scrolling shift. So now we're going to get four. And these are going to be kind of all over the place. So let's bring them down. And that is a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Now, if we come in here, I, I really like to say that. Now, if we come in here, what happens if I change this to a saw wave? And you might be going, well, if we change it to a saw wave, then apparently we're going to start slow and get faster over time. And that's exactly what happens. Let's go ahead. Let's change shape sequencer D to something slower. So this is a little easier to follow. Let's play a note. <laughs> that could be pretty fun. Also, if we go back to our pulse here, and we do our thing from before, a slower rate would have been beneficial. Now we can take advantage of the additional steps that we're able to achieve. Uh, but there we go. So that's there's something subtle about that that I really quick wanted to show you. Uh, so now let's go ahead and check out the last of the remaining options. So the next one is specialized to B. So let's remove this modulation here. Let's uh, hook B up. So B, you're now in charge. Congratulations. Let's take B off of this step and give it what A had. Let's take A away and give it what B had. And let's change our targets. So I'm going to make A the source. And we're going to take uh, whoops, our target here. We want to unassign that. And we're going to change this to right value B. That is a lot of clicking just to get to the right setup. But basically, you just want A and B right here. All right, now what does right value B control? Well, if we look at these and we change the right value, we're able to adjust the offset. Now we saw earlier when it was desirable that we had the offset above zero because the offset above zero kept our cutoff from doing things we didn't want it to do. So we can actually do this as just a static offset using the right value B modulation. Uh, quick note too, we need to have A being controlled right here because right now A is empty and with A off, nothing's gonna happen. So we need A on. Let's make this just a straight line so this is really clear what's happening. We don't get that double modulation thing. One other thing we have to set up. I keep forgetting to set things up. If we take shape B, we have to connect it to something to be to control. Okay, so now we should be all set up. If I play a note, we hear that B is working. Now, right now, B, we see that it's going through, but we're just getting constantly loud just really loud. Why is that? Well, that's because A is controlling that offset. So it's pushing it up. So we don't want it that much. So we could bring this down. So we can again use this as sort of a value to control something indirectly. But the whole point of this is it's a sequencer, right? So what we can do is we could have some sort of a pulse going down. Maybe we could be a second step. And this one is, I don't know, a saw wave. And so things will start out loud and get softer. Now, of course, this needs to be pretty slow. Let's do something like this. And let's change shape B. I mean, not shape B. Let's change sequencer A to move on a slower time base.
And in order to get the effect of what's really going on with these slides, let's go ahead, let's turn this all the way up. And we can hear it turning down. So that's really nice. It's a nice effect. Shape C. Okay, Shape C. You control the curviness. So it's like this or that, you know? And I think the best way to demonstrate Shape C is with a bunch of triangle waves. So let's go ahead, let's grab some triangle waves here. We'll go through and just adjust them all. I don't know of a quick way of doing this. If someone knows, feel free to drop it in the comments. I would be interested in this. Let's make them all perfectly, uh, perfectly triangle-y. And that way we can see the curviness because that's what C is going to control. So let's give C these steps. Let's get rid of B. We'll let A continue to be the thing in control here. And we'll just use this one step. And let's go in. Let's change the target to the curve. And now everything's been set up except for we need to get rid of the modulation on the cutoff and take C and modulate the cutoff. All right, everything's been set up now. Now if I play it, shape A will control the curviness of shape C because shape C is the ability to change the curviness of its specific shape modulator. So we hear there's like wow, 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 wow. And that's because here's the out bend and then... Here is the end bend. So if we were to just set this as a static value and then modulate this, that's what's happening. So actually, I believe we can even see the different shapes in the scope. So let's go ahead and look at shape sequencer C. And we can see that it's doing two shapes here. And it's according to our whims with shape sequencer a, how loud we're allowing it to be. So we could like bring this down and go even the other way. And so we're going to get inverted stuff. And that's shape sequencer C. And then finally, we have D. Now, D is a, is a curious one. D is a got this option called ratchet. And ratchet is a multiplier. So let's go ahead. Let's remove this. Let's drag shape D onto the cutoff. Turn it on. And... We see, we, we can actually view it. Viewing it might be a, a bit easier to understand. So right now, okay, so Ratchet, when it's at zero, is going to provide just, it's not going to do anything special. It's going to basically just multiply by one. And when it's at max, it's going to multiply by four. So let's go ahead and change our blocks here. Don't forget to do that. And so now that it's been changed, when we play a note, we can hear the double modulation happening. So this is like multiply by four. This is like multiply by one. And so we get this double rhythm. So we get this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one. And that's what Ratchet brings to the table, the ability to speed things up in this kind of a way. Let's change this to single so that notes don't fly all over the map. So very cool. And that is the shape sequencers in a nutshell. Let's make a quick patch and just set up something that does something kind of interesting. I think it'd be cool to control ratchet over time. Let's go ahead and give C these two, or not C, B. So where I'm going to take B, I'm going to turn it to control the ratchet. And I'm going to give it a time base of an eighth. No, let's not do an eighth. Let's do a half. Let's leave C right where it's at. Let's grab D. Let's have it control the D tune. We'll bring that up. And now let's uh, let's actually take ratchet and hard limit it bit back. I like that more. Let's go into the effects and we'll turn on the verb and the delay and possibly the EQ, we'll leave it alone, the chorus perhaps. Let's get rid of the delay. No, I like the delay. Uh, possibly bring the mix down on the reverb. And I want to adjust the shape on these. What are we using for the shape output? See, this is where we might choose C instead, because I think it'd be cool to be able to alter that. Let's in fact, let's do that. Let's grab C. This could be interesting. Let's grab C, attach it to the cutoff. And then let's grab shape sequencer A and control the, um, we have to set this one up because there's not a thing to drag to. So we're going to take shape sequencer A. We're going to have it control 
shape sequencer C, the curviness of it. And let's make sure that we're on single mode for this. And shape sequencer A could actually maybe possibly be cool in poly mode because the pulses will be off from each other. It kind of works out. Let's, let's stick with single. And let's see here. I think it'd be dope if we instead used, let's leave A going where it is. Let's remove A and change this instead to shape sequence here D. And D, we will give a couple of these just sort of at random and we'll change its mode to random. And I think we've got a lot going on here. I just want to sort of demonstrate all the things you can set up. Uh, let's put in a second oscillator and let's change this one to something different. Let's do a square, bring its volume down maybe. Maybe random isn't the best for D. Maybe we'll pick a solid loop here. One, two, and then we'll do one, two here. Maybe like this. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Hit the bell icon, subscribe, and have a blessed day.